Well, hello everybody. Today we have a wonderful day. It's about 50 degrees, blowing right around 30 miles an hour. Sustained 20, gusts of 30. So you know the scoring conditions are gonna be just stupid easy. The red gloves from Red Rooster Golf. The hat is from Par Points Golf. And the reason I mentioned the hat is because we're playing par points today. I'm going to score as many points as I can in these subprime conditions. And I say subprime, but I'm not complaining because it is February in Kansas and I'm playing golf. dead straight right down the middle that's nice good little start there that's gonna go downwind that's gonna roll forever because I towed the piss out of it Let's see if we can start off with a birdie or an eagle okay 135 yards to the flag got a firm crosswind and not a whole lot of room past this flag this is on the left side of the green. It's kind of a little notch out there. Not a whole lot of room to work with if you go right at this flag. Dave Stockton said, and I believe Bob Rotella said, if you're not comfortable going right at the flag with a wedge, you should find a new profession. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll start this thing just a little bit to the left. Let it cut back with the wind. Sit, sit a little. Funny story, I was telling this thing to sit and it barely got on the green. I recognize that that makes me look very stupid. Now I just forgot it was 45 degrees outside and the ball doesn't typically fly too far when it's freezing. Looks like this thing's gonna swing a little bit from left to right. I can see the line, I can see the speed. Just gonna trust both of them. These greens are all right, unbelievably slow, so I'm gonna have to give this thing a nice wrapping to get it to the hole. Oh, I left it short. Oh no, I didn't, I got it there. Let's go! That's a good start. Oh, the putt was downwind. Of course I got it there. And you know what else? That was a fantastic start for our par points game. So the hole is worth 495 points, right? If you make par, you get all 495 points. You make bogey, zero. Birdie points double, eagle points triple. So that's almost a 1500 point hole right off the bat. Let's try to keep that going. Another downwind hole. Of course, it's being nice to us right off the bat. Really gotta take advantage of these downwind holes. You're essentially getting a boost from God. And if you don't take advantage of said boost from God, you'll wish you did when you get into the end of the wind holes. Start this down the left side, cut it back. Oh, I like toe hooked it, but it's right down the middle of the fairway. That left to right wind is holding it up perfect. The toe, the chunk toe hook rolls real nice downwind. Got 48 yards in here. We've got a good lie, so I should be able to put a little bit of spin on it, but this front portion of the green tends to get pretty firm this time of year, so we'll see if I'm able to get this thing to stop near the hole. Ain't small, miss small. I'm going to be trying to hold this thing out. Oh, yeah. There we go. This time of year, especially on putts of this length, really got to be patient. Right this close to the hole, there's a really good chance that your first hop is just going to send it in any direction it wants. But you really just got to take that aim, try to put this thing in the back of the cup and not really worry about the result as much as you do about your process. At least that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to make putts this time of year, man. Let me tell you what. Yeah, I mean, at some point it's gonna go straight, but you should never know. <laughs> you were very much rolling the dice this time of year trying to make putts. So now we are on hole number three, and I'm going to lock in at 524 yards. So now a par from here is worth 524 points. If I can get this thing down, not putter, we're not gonna hit putter. If I can get this thing down in four, we get ourselves another thousand points. That is a strong start, ladies and gentlemen. The old slinger. I didn't quite mean to draw it that much, but I also didn't mean to push it that much. So, you know, it worked out. Oh boy. Looks like we just trickled out of the fairway and into a subprime lie. Don't love that. That means we're gonna have to dig it out a little bit. I do like the three wood to get it out of here. Get a little bit of loft on it. 
Um, if I get down after this just a little bit, I'm gonna choke down on it, get down after this just a tad, try to pinch it out, get it to squeeze under the wind, maybe get somewhere up near the green. What do you say? And I fully topped it. <laughs> you know, I had a feeling that lie was a little too dicey to try and get a three wood on it. All right, so it only went 150 yards. That's not very good. I probably should have hit like a four iron or something, but regardless, here we are. 107 yards to the flag, cold into the wind, probably playing like 122, 125 maybe. So we're gonna try to hit a low 125 yard shot in here. Pretty much just a smooth, Knock down 50 degree. I'm gonna try and stuff this. This is a big hole for points here, folks. I gotta be able to get this thing close, give myself a chance for birdie. Did the wind just lay down? Please tell me the wind didn't just lay down. Oh, it didn't. I'll take that, folks. And we are confronted with yet another four foot birdie putt. Oh, I see the line here. Looks a lot smoother than the last one. Nothing more important than fixing your divots. Gotta fix the divots. That is good green karma, and you need good green karma, especially when the greens are rolling like they are right now. We got that little bit of winter protective layer on top of it. We love that protective layer because it is going to guide our golf ball directly to the bottom of this cup. Oh, of course. Yes, sir, baby, yes, sir. And as we've discussed, that is a powerful birdie putt right there. That's worth a thousand points. One of the pretty funny things about this course right now is the maintenance crew isn't putting out tee markers. Everybody that plays in like the 1230 money games puts a stick in the ground for everyone who's supposed to tee off. And we're gonna use that stick on this hole. 125, got a pretty firm crosswind. So this thing is gonna move a lot from left to right. I don't think it's gonna hurt it too much as far as distance goes. So I'm just gonna hit like a smooth kind of knockdown 50 degree and yes, another knockdown. I'm gonna hit almost exclusively knockdowns today. Oh, that is getting hurt. That is getting bullied. Go ball. Go ball. Wow, that is way short. Not a lot of height gonna be put on this one. I should be able to get a decent amount of spin with the lie. Should be able to get under it pretty good. I'm gonna land this thing probably seven to eight feet short of the flag and hope it runs out a little bit. Should check. Oh, I sculled it. <laughs> Looked up on it. Just what, oh. The benefit of thinning it instead of chunking it is that I have a putt for par now. I have a chance. It's got to break. Oh, it doesn't break, does it? The nice thing is, since it was only 125 yards, didn't lose that many points. All right, we got ourselves a little dog leg left par four. This hole's about 380, I believe. The wind is not super conducive to trying to cut the corner because it's kind of into and off the right. I could hit a driver. I just, I want to work on a two iron today, so. We're gonna hit a little two iron up to the right side, try to give it a little, a little bit of right to left spin, try to land this thing in the fairway, shall we? And that's drawing up against the wind, so it shouldn't go too far. Just don't want it to get to the bunker. As I'm walking up here, I see all these feathers, thinking that every one of them is my golf ball, assuming I'm safe from the bunker. And I, so far, do not see my golf ball. So I have a feeling that when I look in this bunker, I'm gonna be upset. I'm upset. Oh, but you know what this means. I now have an opportunity to show off how good I am at fairway bunker shots. We got 112 yards to the green, dead into the wind, a little bit of tree action on that right side, although that shouldn't be much of a problem. I'm going to hit a choke down pitching wedge, just try to hit like almost like a 130 yard pitch with this pitching wedge. Hopefully the wind eats it up a little bit, get this thing on the green, have a chance to roll one in for a bar day. Who knows? We might get lucky and hold this thing. Sand's a little powdery, so I'm gonna have to get down at this thing a little bit. Wow, that went a long way. <laughs> now we got everybody's favorite, a downwind uphill putt on bumpy greens. Let's go. And remember kids, whatever you do, believe in it. Oh, I didn't really believe in that one, did I? Left it short. It's really easy to let those putts get away from you, so leaving one short, I don't feel too bad about that. Next hole. This shot is extremely into the wind. This is a 425-ish yard par four. Dead into the wind, so much so that I've had to lower the camera in order to uh, keep it from falling over. 
So I'm gonna do the same thing I did on three. I'm gonna tee this thing low, put a little bit farther back in my stance and just hit it normal knowing it's gonna draw. Hang on. Sit ball. Ah, that's not good. And my hat is all the way back here. I don't know if I caught a tree or what, but that drive appears to have only gone about 240 yards. Now that's a whole lot of wind and this 186 yard shot into the green is about to play pretty long. I'm gonna take myself a little five iron. I'm not taking a drop from the Kirk path because I don't want to be farther behind that tree. And I caught a tree and went straight down. That was two very bad golf swings. Well, I will tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, my end of the wind game has not been fantastic so far today. And here we are once again with about how far we got. We have 87 yards to the green. Got to get up and down for four to save points. Again, probably playing about 30 yards into the wind. I'm going to say this thing's probably playing 118. So I'm gonna hit another, just kinda, this is a smooth sand wedge. Trying to knock it down. A little low spin, low trajectory shot in there. Land this right next to the flag. Oh, that's floating right up into the air. Go ball. Go ball. I wanna take this time to point out a mistake I made in my game plan. When wind is this hard, it should be treated like a tree branch. What I mean by that is you should keep it under 50 feet at all costs, meaning if you have to hit a seven iron from 100 yards to keep it under a certain height into the wind when it's this strong, that's what you have to do. Hitting a wedge is just gonna get the ball too high. It's gonna spin it too much. Low spin and low trajectory are priority number one. Make that happen and then dial in the distance. Okay, I need to chip this in for par to save points. I have faith. Thank you. Well, not good enough for points. A five never feels good, especially on a 420 yard par four, but really I have no excuses. That was a terrible hole. We got 227 yards here, pretty much a dead crosswind. Now there's two ways I could go about this hole. I could hit a, a five or a four iron, low cut into the wind, or I could hit a six iron, start it about 50 to 60 yards right of the flag and sling one in there Mac Boucher style. Now you know what I'm gonna do for the YouTube video. Oh well of course that's not gonna sling all the way. Well my ball did not sling quite far enough which is a crucial mistake because now I'm chipping downwind. We hate chipping downwind. You lose a lot of touch and feel when you're chipping downwind. But as long as I believe in the shot that I'm gonna hit, I think it'll get close. Now it's really slow, downwind, kind of downhill at the end. So this will be a weird touchy shot. What's really important here is to pick a shot that you wanna hit and commit to it. And there's a little up and down for par. And now's the fun stuff. We got here a 300 yard par four, straight down wind, firm. It's gonna roll out a little bit. This is the promised land, folks. This is where we get our shots back. Got a little two iron here. We're gonna just blister this thing right at the flag. And try to get ourselves an easy birdie, maybe an eagle. Maybe maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll, we'll F around if we're feeling froggy. Jar this thing, make a double eagle. I think that'd be pretty cool. That was a terrible swing. Terrible swing. Oh, that was horrible. We appear to have gotten pretty lucky here. We got a lot of roll out on this shot. This was not a 290 yard two iron. I, I healed it, I blocked it out to the right. Got a lot of roll out on some dormant grass. So thank you, Winter, for bailing me out here. We got a bare lie, a little tip for you guys. I learned this from Mark Terranova. Shout out Mark Terranova. If you feel the handle come away first, makes it a lot easier for you to use the bounce, which makes it easier in turn 
to hit shots off of bare lies like this. So handle first before the club head and you will hit better golf shot off of these bare lies. Spin. Oh, almost jarred it. Got a little eight footer coming back. Let's try to knock that thing in, shall we? This is a big putt here, folks. Need to knock this in, get some of that momentum back. 300 yard downwind par four, we gotta take advantage. Can't leave this hole with a par, gotta make birdie. But we are not results oriented right now, we are process oriented, meaning I'm only going to make sure that I'm ready to hit a good putt. If I'm ready to hit a good putt, I've done all I can do. Whoo, that felt good. All right, now we got a little momentum going. Still two under. I know we made a couple dumb bogeys, but that early eagle is gonna, I think is gonna give us a little cushion. Maybe we can post three under on this side. That would be nice. This is a fun little hole here. Number nine at Salina Country Club. 262 yard. You can call it whatever par you want on the scorecard. It says four. We got 255 yards from right here. Pin is in the back, so probably more like 260. We've got a little bit of wind coming off the right here. Um, kind of the same thing as number seven. If I let this thing sling, it should get a little more distance. And normally I would try to hit a three wood cut up against the wind, try to stick one close. But, and this isn't saying I don't have confidence in my swing. I know that my misses aren't tight enough to try to pull off a shot like that. So this is managing your own game. I'm not playing the best right now. I'm gonna try to hit a shot that I'm more comfortable with, which would be a high draw two iron. Whatever you do, believe in it. Oh, I might've hit that too good, sit ball. God, that's gonna be a long way. Wow, I crushed that. <laughs> and normally this shot is gonna be extremely difficult in the summer because the greens are super fast. This thing slopes away from me like crazy and I'm on a down slope, but because it's winter time and these greens are a lot slower, I have a pretty good chance of sticking this thing close and try to land this thing about 20 feet short. Not a lot of sand in this bunker, really no sand in this bunker at all actually. So I'm gonna have to take a pretty small swing. Yeah, no sand at all, check somehow. Ugh. Well, the only thing we really can do right now is try to chip this thing in. The toe up off the ground, give this thing a little bit more roll out, hands high, and try and essentially just put this thing in the back of the cup. Well, not the best par in the world, but not the worst bogey in the world either. Points, not quite what we wanted, but two under on the front, that ain't bad.